What's up guys, how you all doing? Hey, welcome to the Halloween special. Today we're gonna to be checking out how to make a creepy little skull guy who looks around. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, stay tuned because it's coming up right here, right now on M.I.'s Ferry. Okay guys, so to get this build started, what we're gonna be doing is I bought one of these cool little like Grim Reaper skull things. It's got a spot in the bottom for um, some electronics. We'll be pulling that out of there. I honestly don't know how yet. I may just push really hard and see if it'll pop out. But we'll pop this out so that way we can get some of these uh, LCD screens in there. Basically what I got is the Adafruit uh, Eyes Bonnet for the Raspberry Pi. So it's got a little hat that goes exactly the same size as a Raspberry Pi Zero. We're gonna be using the Raspberry Pi Zero W, which is the one with the wireless on it, an SD card, which I'll get later, and then two of these 20, or uh, sorry, 240 by 240 TFT display. So this isn't the OLED ones, this is the uh, TFT displays. And we should be able to mount those right behind the eyes to give it that cool eye effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started taking this guy apart. Well, that was actually a whole lot easier than I thought it was going to be to pop that out. I thought it was going to take some time, but it looks like that's probably going to work. Uh, we can probably set those screens right behind there. I don't know if uh, how I'm going to mount them yet. I may, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I may uh, do something like maybe line up the holes out here first, maybe poke some holes or something. I'm, I'm not real sure, but we will get to that here in a minute. First things first, we need to get some eyes going on this so we can see kind of how we're going to position this up on here. I don't know. I may end up uh, hot gluing them on. I know that sounds scary, but, uh, or I may end up 3D printing some sort of a bezel or something that will hold it in there. But I think that's going to work uh, just fine. I think we can get two of those in there. Okay, so I've got everything soldered up now. i got some headers soldered onto this board along with a uh, female header right there. So basically these two can go together. So I'm going to snap this together real fast. All right. So now we've got the header on the Raspberry Pi Zero. And now we're ready to hook these up. Now, they hook up exactly the way you would think, the uh, way they're labeled. I'm going to zoom in. So you've got this... Uh, <clears throat> basically vi here and that lines up if we look over here let me rotate this around here if we rotate in get it right here's the light and the vn vn light l-i-t-e so basically how this is going to work is the vi it's going to hook up just like oops sorry it's going to hook up vi here vi there and then same thing on this side so they give you some female to female ribbon cable. I have just split it off. There's about 11 pins each. So I split off um, 11 pins and 11 pins. So now all we have to do is hook it up. Okay guys, so that looks like that about completes the hardware hookup uh, for this. So we've got the Raspberry Pi Zero, we got that uh, hat that's on here. Uh, looks like all of our cables are good and solid, so everything's hooked up quite well. These should be able to fit just fine in our skull underneath once we get them in there. Like I said, we'll have to come up with a bezel. But first things first, let's get some software uh, put on this guy and let's get, uh, get some eyeballs going, shall we? Okay guys, so now we're going to move on to the software section. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is we got to install a uh, light version of Raspbian for this one. That's the only one that's been tested so far, at least in the, the information that I've gone through as yet. So you just go to the normal Raspberry Pi, but we're going to do this Raspbian Buster Light version, okay? And then we're going to bring up our handy dandy Win32 is disk imager. So we go ahead and hit right and yes, and we will put this on our SD card and we'll be back once it's done. <laughs> 
Okay guys, so I got things set up and running on our Pi, so how I did that was when you first boot in the light mode, it basically just comes up to a terminal where you have to log in with your Pi and then Raspberry password, and then it logs you in, and you get basically the normal screen that we see. Now I've gone ahead and set up the SSH, but if you're curious as how I did that, um, basically when you first log in, you'll get a terminal just like this one. You type the uh, sudo raspi config gives you your config, you're going to go down to network options, and then you go down to enter SSID and passphrase. It'll ask you to choose your country that you're in, and then it'll prompt you for the SSID and password. Once you get finished with that, you just uh, will choose finish, and then you will be uh, back to the, the prompt, and you will do an if config, and you should see an IP address as, as I do here should see an IP address. Once you have done that, if you want to enable SSH, you'll basically do the same thing again. Go to your Raspi config and you'll go down to uh, interfacing options and then you'll choose SSH. And it'll ask you if you want to enable it, choose yes, and that's basically it. So that is how I set up my SSH and it just looks a lot better than trying to capture the HDMI, uh, which looks absolutely atrocious. So first thing we need to do to go ahead and get started with this is we're going to have to install the software. Now I have this saved. I'll put a link down in the description, but um, you want to run this command once I get it copied. Okay, it's going to be this curl uh, command. And you're going to download a PyEyes uh, SH, basically, uh, file. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So, all right, so now we have this uh, shell script that we're going to be running. And basically all we have to do is just run it and then follow the instructions. So we'll go ahead and do that. We're going to do it as root so that we can uh, get the root privileges for it. And then we're just going to say bash pi, whoops, bash pi eyes. And we're going to hit go. Now, like I said, it should go ahead and prompt us for uh, some information. So let's see. The script installs the following. Da, 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 da. Um, of course, it's going to install the code and everything. This is one of the examples from Adafruit. Do you want to continue? Yes, we do. So we're going to select a screen type. Now, I have the TFT uh, 240 by 240, if I remember right. Let's look over here. Yep, 240, <clears throat> 240 by 240. TFT. So I'm going to use that IPS 240 by 240. Hit three, enter. Install the GPIO halt utility. Sure, why not? GPIO pin for halt. Uh, I don't know. Zero? Sure. Install ADC support. You only need this if you're going to want to install like joysticks or something where you can move the eyes around yourself or if you're going to have trigger buttons to make it blink or make it dart around as it's looking. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just going to let it roll. So I'm just going to hit no. <clears throat> okay, install USB Ethernet uh, gadget support. Um, sure, why not? I don't know if we'll use that. I'm not real sure what that is. I'll have to look at it uh, later. So we've got all of our screen types and everything. Do we want to continue? Yes, we do. So this should go ahead and start installing our software. Okay, guys, so that took quite a while, and now it's finally finished. So um, it asks if I want to reboot it, and the theory goes... If everything installed correctly, we should be able to get it. Okay, so let's go ahead and press yes. And like I said, if all goes well, supposedly it should uh, reboot and they should start coming up. Okay, guys, just wanted to give you a quick update. Looks like I've got some words going on. Looks like the Pi is booting, like the normal boot sequence. Oh my gosh, those are so tiny. That's just crazy. So it looks like the standard boot sequence is going. So I think... I think we're getting there. I think it's 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 at least uh, starting up. Okay, guys. So it looks like it looks like we got them now. Um, there's some tweaking that needs to be done. It says that the eyes will be a little glitchy um, at first, but it did work. So they are installed and it is working. They're looking around now that we've got this set up. Let me make this bigger here. Uh, should have a in the boot directory. Let's see, there is the PyEyes directory, if you can see that right here. So let's CD into that. And in this directory, what we're going to do is we're going to stop everything. So we're going to sudo kill all fbx2. 
Okay, so they're no longer moving. So what we need to do is maybe update a few things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna type this following command for the TFT. OLEDs are different. This is gonna be just for the TFT. So if you have the ones that I have, this is what you do. So we'll do a sudo dot slash FBX2 dash T dash B. And then it's a very long string of zeros. It's one. And then let's see, I got to count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, I will say that does not look right. <laughs> I think we'll just go ahead and I'll flash it to one of my faster SD cards. Right now I'm just using a very low level one and we'll see if maybe that will make, because I know that makes a huge difference if you have a faster uh, card. I was thinking we might be able to get away with this one, but I don't think we're going to be able to. Okay, guys. Well, um, I switched out the SD card. Doesn't look like I make a, made a huge bit of difference looking at it down there. Um, kind of slow. So um, I'm going to see if I can't speed it up just a little bit. You can go too far with this. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to CD to our boot and our pie eyes uh, folder. And then we are going to kill all FBX2. And once we do that, now we can start it by itself with kind of our own parameters like we did before. So we're going to do a sudo dot slash FBX2 dash I because we're using the uh, IPS uh, display, which is basically the TFT 240 by 240. And then we're going to do a dash B for the bit rate. Now, default for IPS is 96, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 megahertz, basically. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to fire it back up with 96 uh, megahertz and we'll see what it looks like. So let's see. So here we go. I mean, it looks a little better. It's still, still a little laggy. Um, so what you can do is you can stop it and we can like up it. Let's go to 97 see if that makes it worse. Well, shoot, let's go for the gold. Let's go 100 megahertz, or 100 megahertz. Let's do 100. Oops, well, you can't do that with a J in there. I got excited. I hit the keyboard. Okay, now it's getting grainy. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me zoom in. I don't know if you can see that. See how grainy it is? So, yeah, that's too fast. So, you know what? Because <laughs> we can. Let's just get right there. 999999. Enter. That's actually pretty good. So we may stick with that. So now that we've tested, there's a way that we can make this permanent. We have to go into the RC file and add it to it. So um, we're going to stop it. And then we're going to go to the uh, Etsy file or go to Etsy. So we're going to CD to Etsy. And there should be a file in here. Uh, VI it. Uh, RC.local should be in here. Okay. So now if we look... Here's our Pi Eyes. Uh, there's the there's the boot, the dash I. We need to set the bit rate. So what we can do is we can do an insert in this. If I can get it to insert dash B, okay, and then we'll put our uh, 99 and then one two three one two three in there. What we'll do is we'll reboot it. What should happen is once it reboots, it should be up to what we just set, okay, for the bit rate. We'll go ahead and I will wait for that to reboot and we'll be right back. I think this is good enough for now. I mean, I think I think it looks good. So um, I'm probably going to leave it there. Okay, guys. So I got it all plugged in. I tried to 3D print some of the stuff that uh, Adafruit had and it just, it didn't work. And it didn't fit right. I couldn't get the right size lenses. But I noticed that if you just put it in here, it actually does look pretty good if you get it like like so. As you can see, it looks pretty good. So what I'm thinking of doing is maybe figuring out a way to tape this in here. I'm wanting to stick away from hot gluing this in, but I may end up having to do it. I know that sounds scary on nice, neat glass screens, but I don't know if there's going to be any other way to do it. So I'm going to experiment around a little bit and see what we can do.
Okay guys, so nothing a little, a little super glue can't take care of. Um, looks like it actually, uh, actually looks pretty good. So he's able to look around, which is awesome. All right, so I'm gonna work on getting this stuffed up inside and get some stuff mounted up to where we can finish it all up. Okay guys, last but not least, had to get a power block to uh, power him up. Just gonna put that in there. Now the idea, I think I'm gonna cut out a space for the cord, so what I'm gonna do is use a pair of tin snips Now our cord should be able to go out the back, should be able to turn this and sit her down nice and easy. Cord through the back and then you could probably tape this down or however you want to do it <laughs> or turn it sideways or however you want to do it. I think that came out pretty darn slick. All in all, I think I'm pretty happy with how it all came out. I like the way that uh, it went together. The glue idea was actually a pretty good idea. It goes in there nicely and it's clear so you can't really tell. And if you add a little smoke to it, looks pretty awesome. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the build today. This was actually quite a bit of fun. Uh, it was actually, uh, I, I feel it was easier than, than uh, what I was uh, expecting it to be to start out with. I didn't know how I was gonna get it mounted up, but honestly, I think it turned out pretty darn good. So I hope you guys uh, have a safe and wonderful Halloween. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share if you like this content. I'll bring you more of it. The t-shirts uh, down below at Teespring. Check that out as well as check out the Reddit uh, channel down below. I post things there as much as I possibly can. All right, guys, thank you so much. Happy Halloween, and we will see you next time.